Hello and welcome to part one of the rock type series. In this video we will be looking specifically at igneous rocks. Now igneous rocks form when magma or lava cools down and solidifies. So when we think of igneous rocks we need to be thinking of magma and lava. Now I'm sure a lot of you already know that there is a slight difference between magma and lava and the difference is its position. Magma is molten rock that is found within the Earth's crust, whereas lava is molten rock that has come to the surface. And this usually happens through volcanic eruptions. So if this is the case, then igneous rocks surely can form in two different places. Below the Earth's crust, from magma, and on top of the Earth's crust, from lava. So this is where we get our two types of igneous rocks, intrusive and extrusive. The key thing with intrusive versus extrusive igneous rocks is where they formed. If this rock formed within the Earth's crust, then it will be an intrusive igneous rock. If this rock formed on top of the Earth's crust, then it is an extrusive igneous rock. Now the second difference is going to be in the appearance of the rock. Our intrusive igneous rocks are going to have large crystals, whereas our extrusive igneous rocks are going to have small crystals. Now there is quite a bit of science behind crystal formation, but basically there are minerals in magma and lava. And when magma and lava cool down, these minerals try to stabilize. Because intrusive igneous rocks cool down within Earth's crust, it will take longer for this magma to solidify, giving the minerals more time to stabilize and thus forming larger crystals. Extrusive igneous rocks will cool down a lot faster because they are on the surface of the Earth. This means that there is less time for the minerals to stabilize, which means the crystals will be much smaller. A good example of an intrusive igneous rock is granite, and a good example of an extrusive igneous rock is basalt. But now the question comes in, what happens if our surrounding land erodes? All of this land that is around our intrusive igneous rock is possibly less resistant to erosion. And so, after time, all of the surrounding rock could disappear, it could erode. Which then means that our once intrusive igneous rock, remember it was intrusive, is now exposed on the surface it will still remain an intrusive igneous rock because that is where it formed. Igneous landforms that form within the Earth's crust are called igneous intrusions. Magma is less dense than rock and so this magma moves up through cracks and joints and fractures in our Earth's crust and this is how we get igneous intrusions occurring. To give you an idea of where we are looking at this rock formation, we can look at the internal structure of the Earth. So if we were to take a slice out of our Earth, we would have the crust, which is right at the top, that is what we live on. We get two different types of crusts, the continental crust and the oceanic crust. It is our thinnest layer. Then underneath that we have our mantle, and then underneath that we have our core which is then broken up into our outer core and our inner core. Now when we are looking at igneous rock formation, we are talking about magma in our upper mantle that is going to push its way through joints and fractures in the crust. So this is happening right near the surface over here. Here we have some igneous intrusions. Now intrusions means that our Igneous rocks are forming within our Earth's crust. So let's have a look at some of these. This main one here at the bottom, it is our biggest and our deepest igneous intrusion, and that is known as a batholith. 
when we are looking specifically at a volcanic structure or a volcanic system then we would call this the magma chamber this vertical igneous intrusion would be called a pipe and because it is connected to a volcano we could also call it a volcanic pipe over here we have another vertical igneous intrusion but it is a lot shorter and this is called a dike this horizontal igneous intrusion is called a sill and now we have these two interesting looking igneous intrusions the one that has a dome or mushroom shape is known as a lacolith and the other one that has more of a bowl or saucer shape is known as a lopolith now remember these formed inside our earth's crust so they are igneous intrusions over time the surrounding rock can erode and this means that our igneous intrusions will then be exposed to the earth's surface when they are exposed to the Earth's surface, we call them different things. For example, if a lacolith was exposed to the Earth's surface, we would then call that feature a dome. If you want to learn more about rock types, be sure to keep an eye open for my videos on sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks, and the rock cycle, which connects all of these rock types together. Thanks for watching!